Good morning, welcome to theheart.org. My name's uh, Professor Tony Gerslick, I'm from the University Hospitals of Leicester, UK, and I'm here at Munich uh, at the ESC 2012. Uh, and I'm delighted that uh, I've been given the opportunity to talk to some of the PIs of the late-breaking uh, and keynote talks. And I'm joined today by uh, Eva Lon, who's the uh, PI of the GRACE study, and she's from uh, McMaster University in Canada. And uh, she's going to talk to us a little bit today about uh, insulin glargine and polyunsaturated fatty acids and their effects on carotid intimal hyperplasia. So that's what's written in front of me. Explain to me a little bit about okay. why you set up the study in the okay. first place. Well, first of all, thank you for, uh, for your interest. Um, so um, uh, GRACE, as you mentioned, is a large atherosclerosis sub-study of a large clinical endpoint trial, which is called ORIGIN. Now, why did we do it? We know that the atherosclerosis is the main cause of death and disability in people with diabetes, and even in people with pre-diabetes, with impaired glucose tolerance or impaired fasting glucose. Insulin, exogenous insulin, has been used since the 1920s. There are experimental basic research studies showing possible anti-inflammatory, anti-atherosclerotic effects, although some studies raise concern about pro-atherogenic actions of, the ins of insulin. Okay. What is very interesting that after using insulin for so many years, we still do not have good studies on its effects on human atherosclerosis progression. The effect of insulin directly as opposed to its indirect effects, is that what you mean? Well, the effects of insulin, of administration of insulin, oh, whether it's directly direct the through the drug itself or oh. through glucose lowering, it's oh. something that needs to be sorted out. But it, the effects of uh, uh, exogenous insulin on human atherosclerosis progression are not well studied. Similarly, polyunsaturated omega-3 fatty acids have been studied in experimental settings. Some studies suggest maybe benefits on endothelial function, other aspects of atherosclerosis. But again, there are only few studies on human atherosclerosis progression, and the data is inconclusive. So we felt that in addition to large clinical endpoint studies, these mechanistic studies on the effects on atherosclerosis per se are also important. And this is why we conducted the GRACE study. Okay, so just describe what the, what the study was. How did patients get into the study? They okay. were a subgroup of a larger trial. Right. And They'll this is a mechanistic study looking at carotid intimal... Media thickness. Media thickness as measured by... Uh, high resolution carotid ultrasound. Oh, okay. So how did patients get in, okay. how were they selected, and what right. was a randomized? Right, so the large form? parent origin trial was conducted in 12,500 patients. It's reported in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, we uh, inquired about centers with interest and the expertise, availability of uh, high uh, quality equipment. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we tested, we trained these centers, and we tested and certified those that really perform the standardized ultrasound assessment. Given that we're looking at very small changes over time, typically in carotid sure. intima media sickness, it's very important to standardize the technical aspects of this method. All readings were done centrally at the core laboratory. So someone recorded the image and then it was Correctly. a core lab? It, yeah, and okay. the core lab did all the measurements. So out of all the many origin uh, uh, centers, uh, we enrolled 32 centers, and this are the ones in seven countries. These are the ones that provided patients for our trial. Obviously, patients had to meet clinical eligibility criteria as well, mm -hmm. which were age of 50 or more, with evidence of pre-diabetes, impaired, uh, impaired fasting glucose or impaired glucose tolerance, newly diagnosed diabetes, or relatively early diabetes, type 2, meaning that they had to be on no more than one oral hypoglycemic drug. Why did you choose this early group? We felt that uh, potentially any intervention that would affect atherosclerosis may have a better chance oh. in a population that is earlier in the course of disease. Maybe some studies looking at clinical endpoints, such as the larger court trial and some other trials, looked at the later stage of diabetes when it may be potentially more difficult to induce changes. To influence the changes. Right. Furthermore, people had to be at high cardiovascular risk, defined by a previous cardiovascular event, 
or risk factors such as left ventricular hypertrophy, microalbuminuria, known arterial stenosis in any vascular bed, abnormal ankle brachial index, and they had to have an adequate baseline carotid ultrasound, okay. meaning a minimum of four out of a possible 12 measurable segments is determined at the core so lab. quite a controlled group because, as you say, these changes will not are not going to be are very great over time, depending on how long you Correct. scan for. So we need to be very standardized to see any difference. Correct. So very tight confidence intervals Correct. on your on your data. Correct. So what what happened to the patients? What did you what, All right, so to start what? with we did these ultrasound evaluations at baseline and yearly thereafter for a median for how long after? Yearly, every yeah, year. For how long? Uh, for a median of four point nine years from okay. the first baseline to the uh, last carotid ultrasound determination. The clinical end, uh, duration of follow-up was a little bit longer as part of the parent trial was 6.2 years. Nevertheless, for IMT studies in this literature or atherosclerosis progression trials, 4.9 years is actually quite a long period of time. So what were the interventions? The interventions were an insulin, it's called the basal insulin, it's an insulin that provides a smooth and long-term lowering of glucose, it's called insulin glargin. This was administered once daily and titrated based on an algorithm trying to achieve normal glycemia. Glucose, uh, fasting glucose levels of less than 95 milligrams per right. deciliter. This part of the comparison uh, was randomized but not blinded because the people had to inject themselves, so it was open label. Randomized the, from, from the insulin glargine versus what? Versus standard glycemic the, care, I versus apologize. Standard versus standard glycemic care. But was it care. a probe design where the images reviewed blind to the treatment? Yeah, all the images, all the uh, uh, personnel at the core ultrasound laboratory was blinded as okay, to treatment. So it's assessment. a probe design. And the, the, where did the polyunsaturated now, fatty acids uh, come It was in? a two by two factorial oh. design <coughs> in which patients were also randomized to polyunsaturated fatty acids, one gram Omacor, uh, or matching placebo, and this comparison was double blind and placebo controlled. Okay, so some patients got both. Some patients and got some both, patients got some patients got standard care got none. and not. No. Correct. So okay. there's four cells as okay. in any two by two factorial. How many patients? We uh, started with 1,184 patients, uh, w which met all the eligibility criteria. Of these 25 patients died prior to the first yearly post-randomization ultrasound, scheduled ultrasound, and 68 did not have an adequate post-randomization ultrasound, so that efficacy analysis were conducted in 1,091 and that, patients. And that was power enough for a 4x4 four four design? Yeah, that was power enough because we, te we uh, hypothesized and then verified that there was no subadditivity between oh, treatments. So there no interaction? No interaction. Okay, that's exactly. very important because right. that would reduce Absolutely. your power. Yeah. So what did you show at 4.9 okay, so years? At 4.9 years. First, uh, I just very briefly want to mention what happened with risk factor levels. Please. So people very started important. with a blood pressure level of 146 over 84 and uh, neither of these two interventions, neither insulin glargine as compared to standard care, nor omega-3 fatty acids had any impact on blood pressure, although blood pressure was reduced in all patients in the as study. It happens in all as trials. It happens. You observe oh, patients and they uh, observe themselves. Absolutely. They're in a trial, they yeah, do better. Absolutely. Uh, with regards to uh, lipids, uh, glargine had no effect on total cholesterol, LDL and HDL cholesterol, but it did lower triglycerides, so reduction was relatively modest, 0 0.2 uh, millimoles per liter or, one, or 17 milligrams per deciliter at two years and 20 milligrams per deciliter at study end. It was highly statistical significance, although not very large, uh, given that people started with fairly average levels, about 1.2 nine millimoles per liter triglycerides at baseline. Uh, it, uh, insulin glargine, as expected, provided lower fasting glucose and glycated hemoglobin levels throughout Stand the study as compared to the standard treatment, okay. which was with oral hypoglycemic agents yes, yes, or yes, diet. Yes, yes. The majority were on oral drugs. Uh, and the differences in glycated hemoglobin over the duration was approximately 0.5%. Okay. 
It so, was again a population with relatively early diabetes. Yes. A baseline glycated hemoglobin was 6.8%. 6.8% and it went down to 6. Or three or something. Well, it increased a bit in the standard group yeah. and it ended at 6.3 in the glargin arm. Okay. Uh, so that was significantly different? That was significantly different. The difference is in fasting plasma glucose measured every year and in glycated hemoglobin at every comparison was statistically significant. Now, with regards to the IMT, the primary outcome, our primary outcome was a measurement derived from the maximum of 12 carotid artery segments. That includes a near and far walls right. of a common carotid, the bifurcation and internal carotid artery segments. For those who are not so familiar with this technique, what is usually done, uh, the region of interest is defined by the flow dividers between the internal and external carotid right. arteries. And then you measure around that region, ensuring that the repeated scans are done uh, at the same, in the same, same place. Manner. Right. Uh, the 12 segment model is more comprehensive because it has more carotid arterial segments. It has a bit of a downfall in that frequently internal carotid artery segments are more difficult to visualize. Uh, and indeed, uh, when looking at how complete the data was, uh, it was most complete for the common carotid and least for as the internal carotid, as shown by us and others sure, in sure. many studies. So, so but our primary endpoint was still the 12 carotid artery segment, and for this we showed the trend for benefit for insulin glargin, which did not show statistical significance. There was about 11% reduction in the annualized right. rate of change in CIMT from 12 carotid artery segments. So there's a 11-12% a reduction in medial thickness in the, those receiving insulin, insulin glargin, oh. which oh. Did, was not statistically not significant. For two predefined secondary outcomes, one that looked just at the common carotid, which is usually the most precise and available in yeah. measurements, and one looking at the common carotid and bifurcation. We did show significant differences, a 21% reduction in the slope of atherosclerosis okay. progression for common carotid, and 17% when looking at common carotid and bifurcation. And we had an additional outcome, which looked only at far wall segments. It's more of a technical detail, but far wall all measurements are more accurate, and there we saw a trend with a p-value of 0 0.06. Okay, so for so glargin, we did not meet our primary endpoint, but we did see some a, beneficial, effect. consistent effects. And for the group for that got the combined intervention? Yeah, we did not do the uh, between-cell comparisons because we first tested for interaction and uh, there was see. no interaction okay. at all. Okay. But it's something that may be of interest yeah, in well, secondary analysis. Two, it, you never know. You may predict That's there's no true. interaction, but they may turn out to be. Yeah, you're absolutely right. For the omega-3 fatty acids versus placebo comparison, we observed absolutely no differences for the primary, both secondary, and the additional carotid IMT and Okay, point. so we've got to keep it short because, uh, sure. uh, uh, sadly, because I think it's a really interesting area, but just give us in one sentence the how you think this could impact on treatment. Okay, to start, uh, this is a mechanistic study using a surrogate endpoint, so I do not think it will influence practice guidelines and should not influence practice guidelines, it should be guided by clinical endpoint trials. We have a number of clinical endpoint studies which looked at more versus less aggressive glucose lowering, but in both arms insulin may have been used, so they weren't randomized to insulin. Also we know from studies with very long observation like UKPDS, at 15 to 20 years they started to see divergence, but not early on. What our study suggests, first of all, that insulin is safe, it is well tolerated, even in these people with early glycemic abnormalities. It surely is not pro-atherogenic, and if anything, it probably has a modest beneficial slow effect on the vascular wall, which potentially may translate in clinical event reduction, although this remains a hypothesis which is currently under investigation. So for the omega-3 fatty acid okay. arm, Unfortunately, we did find it was well tolerated and safe, but it had really no effect. 
so our study does not support the use of this intervention in this patient population. Sounds like you've got a, a lot more studies to come in the future. That's true. Thank you very much. Thank you very Fascinating. much. Fascinating. I've certainly learnt a lot and uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much and I hope you've Thank enjoyed you. the programme.